All right, well, why don't we get started with today's presentation. This is Sarah Neiswanger. I'm the Senior Manager of GANA uh, Member Services at the National Glass Association, and I'm pleased to introduce Vicente Montes um, as our speaker today. Vicente is a facade and structural engineer at Curtain Wall Design and Consulting in CDC's Virginia, Washington, D.C. office. He joined CDC in 2005 and worked in the engineering division during his first years. He designed and engineered different building and closure systems such as curtain wall, point supported glass walls, natural stone, precast concrete panels, and metal panels. He holds a master's of science degree in, in, in facade engineering from the University of Bath in the United Kingdom and a bachelor of degree in civil engineering with a major in structural engineering. He also holds a minor in tall buildings from the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Vicente pioneered CDC's solar reflectivity technology and has given multiple presentations on this and other topics at national and international venues. His articles have also been published in different journals and industry publications. He is a registered professional engineer in the District of Columbia, Maryland, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, Virginia, and Mexico. And with that, I'm going to make Vicente our host and allow him to take over this presentation. Sarah, thank you very much for the introduction. Let me um, share my screen here. Sarah, can, can you give me control? Mm -hmm. um. Can you see my screen now? Yes, thank you. All right. All right, should we get started? Yes, please, go ahead. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us in today's presentation. And thank you to NGA for having us and for allowing us to present this to you. Uh, we at CDC are celebrating 45 years of being in business. We are specialized in the design, engineering, and consulting of all building enclosure systems. This includes the vertical wall, uh, below-grade waterproofing, above-grade waterproofing, and roofing. So let's get started. Now, these are a few of the learning objectives. It's uh, to review the updates to ASTM glass railing standard. We'll also cover an overview of requirements for glass railing systems for IDC, and we'll also have a brief mention of other standards. There's a lot of information that is included in IBC, ASTM, and other documents. We cannot cover everything in detail in 30 minutes, but we'll, we'll, do we'll, we'll mention the most important part of, of all of that. Here is just a few examples of a few of the glass railing systems that we have seen and encountered on different projects. Uh, the main aspect of, of the photos that you are looking at here is that uh, the architect and the design team wanted unobstructed views, and that's what you see here. Here's a few more. And now um, the one that you see here has a top rail, a guard rail, and we'll cover that in detail. Uh, these, the one here has vertical post, and the one here has glass infill panels. Now take a look at this video. You, some of you might have seen it already, but there's, there's a very important aspect that, that you have to consider. Now keep in mind that the IBC and ASTM cover no normal building use, not abuses, as you are going to see on this video. The guy there flexing and, and, and trying to, to do uh, some impressing here is going to have an accident. Now, the International Building Code and ASTM do not cover cases like that. 
But if this video didn't end well, if there was a fatality, then it's uh, more likely that there was going to be legal action. And regardless if, if the design intent was for a guy, for a guy like this to, to do that, if there was a fatality, it, it was going to get ugly real quick. So I'm just gonna let it play once more so that you can see it. So moving on, the first um, standard that we're gonna cover is, is ASTM E2358. This is the standard specification for the performance of glass in permanent glass railing systems, guards, and balustrades. Now, as we said before, the scope of this standard, and it's clearly stated there, is based on the health and safety of all potential users. But it also says that this is for norm normal and anticipated building uses, not for other uses. Now, um, one of the design requirements per ASTM, and, and you'll see these numbers in parentheses, this is the reference from ASTM, um, it's that your top, your, your guard needs to be at 42 inches from walking surface. And you see that here on this image. Now, there's one more uh, design requirement that it, that it requires uh, designers to have this top at 48 inches from walking surface is if the adjacent surface is more than 20 feet. But this 48 inch requirement only applies to public assembly areas elementary schools, and multi-family buildings. Now, in ASTM E2358, handrails are also defined. And handrails are required at corridors, ramps, walkways, and closed stairways. And you need to have a, a handrail if the slope is at least one in 20. But the handrail itself needs to be somewhere between 34 inches and 38 inches from the from walking surface. If it's a stair, this would be from the from the step. Now, there is an additional requirement. If if it's if the handrail goes in a building where there is um, where the users are less than 12 years old, then there's an, an additional height requirement for for the handrail. It needs to be, needs to be lower. ASTM 2358 also addresses transfer rail systems, railing system penetrations, and hand grip. Again, we cannot cover everything in detail, so uh, it's just important for you to know that. Uh, regarding performance requirements, there's a, there's a requirement for deflection, and there's three. The first one is if the load is applied at the vertical support. You can see the arrow here, and this is where the load will be applied. Now, let's assume that for, for these cases that we're going to be looking at here, that the height of this top rail is at 42 inches, and that the width uh, the distance between posts is 60 inches. So for the first case, if the load is applied at the vertical support, which uh, the, the allowable is H over 12, in this case, 42 divided by 12. And the allowable is 3.5 inches. Now, 3.5 inches might seem like a lot, and it might seem like a forgiving number, but in reality, and based on our experience, what we have seen is that if the base here, this is where the where the posts are attached. If the base is not rigid enough, or if it's not properly supported, this post will rotate. And if it, if it rotates, then this is going to translate to deflection here. And it doesn't take much rotation to get to 3.5 inches. The second um, requirement is the horizontal load at midspan of the rail. For that, the allowable is H over 24, plus L over 96. For this very specific example, that translates to 2.2 .2 inches and 3 eighths. And the third case, uh, something important here is that this deflection would be measured from where, from where the, from the nominal position of this uh, rail to, where, uh, to the horizontal point of deflection and, and the allowable is 2 and 3 eighths. Now, the third and last deflection requirement is that the, uh, when the vertical load is applied at the rail midspan, which would be here. For that case, the allowable deflection is L over 96. In this case, 5 eighths, 5 eighths of vertical deflection, which would be in this direction. Now, something very important to consider for this last case is, and this would also depend on how you are supporting your class, if you deflect 5 eighths of an inch or even less, 
there is a risk for this metal to be coming in contact with the glass. Let's assume for this case in specific that this rail doesn't move and that you deflect five eighths of an inch. If the gap between the top edge of this glass and the rail is less than five eighths of an inch or, or even five eighths of an inch, then these, uh, when the top rail deflects, you could contact the glass and the glass could break. Now, um, per E2358, there's six different classifications. Uh, type number one is when the glass is supported on all four sides. Type number two is when the glass is supported on two sides, and there's multiple uh, examples for this. The top edges, the sides, or even when you have uh, multi, multiple light glazings as, as part of the infill. Type number three is for point supported glazing or clamps. And these are the graphic representations of that, of, of how would that would look like. Number four is when the glass is supported on three sides. Type number five, and this is one of the more popular ones that we have seen, is when the glass is supported on just one side, meaning that the glass is cantilevering off a shoe or a support here at the base. And for type five, you could have glass and glass only. You could also have a top rail, and you could also have a uh, this type of rail, which depends if it's between 34 and 30, 38 inches, and per ASTM and IBC, it would be considered a handrail. Now, we'll get into more details about the top uh, rail later on. Now, the last type is type number six, which is also supported on one side, but with point support, like what you see here. Now, the level of performance. There, there's four different levels uh, of performance for the glass in glass railing systems. One um, is basic, two, it's safety, and three and four are in things. Now, this table here shows you the level of uh, requirement for each one of these types, of these levels. You see the point load, and you see the uh, distributed load, and also uh, distributed load for your infield panels. Now, uh, please note that per, per IBC, the point load requirement is 200 pounds, and the uniform load requirement is 50 pounds. Now, that would be this case for, for type one through four. This would be the case that the IBC covers. If you know them, as we said, one of the most popular ones that we have seen is when the glass is supported on just one side. And that's, no, uh, that's uh, type five. But for type five, ASTM has a more stringent requirement, which is 300 pounds point load. Um, now, moving on to the second standard is ASTM E2353. This standard is the standard test method for performance of glazing in permanent railing systems, guards, and balustrades. This was released in 2017, the updated, updated version. And this table, which is table two from that standard, tells you the classification for the glass in, in these applications, and it goes from one through four. One, which is this, is when you impact the glass and it doesn't break. Number two is when you impact the glass, it breaks, but it remains in place. Number three is when the glass breaks, but as you can see here, an equivalent of the weight equivalent of 10 square inches is what gets um, released or not retained by the system. And number four is when everything fails. Not re no retention, no nothing. The glass breaks and it just goes. And um, on E2353, it talks about three different te te uh, test methods. And the first one is the static loads. This is for structural performance. Uh, shot back impact test, pendulum impact test, and these, are, these last two is for the class. Now again, there's a lot uh, to cover for uh, E2353. We don't have enough time. So um, these are the most important things for you to know. There's a specific requirement for how these these two, these three tests are conducted. There's specific requirements of what the apparatus needs to look like, but we won't cover that in detail. Now, um, as of right now, uh, ASTM is working on a new uh, document. This is called the ASTM Work Document 59324, and it's the Standard Practice Guide 
for design of glass railings and guard and balusters. Now moving to moving on to the IBC requirements, uh, we're going to cover um, in this presentation IBC 2015. As of May of 2018, there's 24 states in the US that have adopted IBC 2015. And there's only one uh, US territory, which is the US Virgin Islands, that have adopted IBC 2018. That is why we are going to cover the references for 2015. And that's what you would see here in the parentheses. Um, outside the US Virgin Islands and the 24 states that are now under IBC 2015, the other states are either on 2012, six, or uh, other versions of, of the code. There's one even that it's under 2003. So first, glass and railing systems is considered a hazardous location. And for that reason, it needs to be safety glazing. And for for the for this application, that would that would mean that the structural baluster, that the infield panels, need to be safety glazing. And safety glazing means that it's either tempered or um, or laminated. And it doesn't matter the area or height above the walking surface. Any glass in a glass railing system application needs to be uh, safety glazing. Hazardous locations. There's a requirement for impact test, and that uh, you can find in CPSC 16 CFR part 1201. Again, we are not going to cover that in detail. Now, there's a specific requirement for um, safety glazing, and it, it needs to be permanently marked. On this reference, on this uh, section of IBC 2406.3, you are going to see, you, you could find the specific requirements for what that permanent marking needs to be. It needs to, it, it must have the manufacturer and it must have the standard with which it, with, uh, it complies. Now, this is very important. Just recently, we were involved in a project. It, um, the glass was being procured from Europe. It was curved glass. It, it, it wasn't for railing systems, but it was curved glass. And the manufacturer didn't have the testing for the US standard. They couldn't stamp the glass with the US standard. They could have stamped the glass with the European standards that they, they met, but the US, the IBC does not recognize the European standards. It only recognizes the American standards. Now, why is that important? Because you have to, you must comply to the, to the regulations in the US. Even though these European standards had the same intent, which was safety, and pretty much the requirements on both standards are comparable, uh, the IBC requires that is the U.S. standard. I skip one. Um, now, uh, glass and canvas and guards uh, needs to be laminated uh, per this section here, and it needs to be a minimum of one quarter of an inch. The only case uh, that it's uh, where, where you are allowed to have monolithic glass uh, is if there's no walking surface beneath, or if the walking surface beneath is permanently protected from the risk of falling glass. This would be like a canopy around your building. If you don't comply with that, your glass needs to be tempered. And this is a new requirement on IBC 2015. I'm sorry, it needs to be laminated. It needs to be laminated if you, if you do not comply with these two requirements here. Now, um, the design fact, it, all systems need to be designed uh, with a factor of four. This doesn't mean that if you're testing in the field, that you need to multiply these loads that appear here by four. It is different. There's a specific requirement for field testing. This design factor of four, it's for, it's, as I said, for design, not for testing, not for performance. This is for design. We have seen this mistake uh, done on several projects, several occasions, when they want to multiply the loads by four. That is not the case. Uh, the loads that are recognized in IBC are 50 pounds per linear foot and 200 pounds. It also, if it's an exterior application, you need to design your railing systems to, uh, to resist wind or any other atmospheric, um, atmospheric uh, condition or loads that your system is going to resist. And this is a requirement on 2404.1. Now, each guard section needs to be supported by a minimum of three glass balusters, and the guard needs to remain in place if one glass panel fails. Now, there's an exception to this. 
The top rail is not required if the glass is laminated, but be careful with the um, municipality or city where you're designing your project. Cities like Chicago, for example, do not allow for this exception. Chicago, you need to have a top rail, regardless if, you're, if your glass is laminated or not. This is something new. Per IBC 2018, the panels in these type of systems need to be tested to remain in place as a barrier following impact or glass breakage in accordance with ASTM E2353. This is very important and significant. In our experience, and uh, based on, on, on the different conditions and loads required, we have seen that you need a minimum of half an inch thick glass to resist the loads. But with this new requirement for, um, that is on 2018 IBC, the glass would have to be thicker to resist the loads after impact or glass breakage. So this is a significant change and this is coming. If you are, if you have a project in the U.S. Virgin Islands, it, it's already there. So this is very significant. Don't forget that new requirement. Now, a case study, and we don't have much time to go um, through a lot of the details, but this project in Texas, one of the glass, one of one piece of glass in, in the in the building broke, and it rained down. Uh, this the glass broke because um, the railing system was designed for the glass to overhang the the slabage so so the glass itself was covering the slabage and the the building was designed as a post tension slab so one of the tendons in the in the pt slab broke and when the cable broke it hit the glass and it broke the glass and there was legal action now um remember this piece of glass broke for different reasons other than uh, poor design or et cetera, et cetera. So it broke and then uh, an investigation started. Uh, we were called, we reviewed all the documents and after we reviewed all the documents, we found that actually the system was poorly designed. And this base plate that you see here on this finite element analysis snapshot measures two inches by four inches. And that plate was under design, but Again, at first, the glass didn't break because this plate was under, under design. It broke because the tendon release broke and, and it hit the glass. But that's how everything started. Then when we go through the documents and review the calculations, we see that this is under design. What you see here is exactly what the um, base plate looked like. This is exactly how it was uh, manufactured. There was a hole here to allow for the vertical plate to come in and be welded on the underside of the plate. But all that you see in red is beyond yield. So um, it, it was bending after some testing that we did. So we redesigned the system. Uh, we used a higher yield strength uh, for the stainless steel, which is this base plate and the stanchion plate. And the glass is no longer overhanging. It's, not long, no, it's no longer covering the edge of the slab. And this is what the system looks like right now. Now, some considerations when, when you have tempered glass, I mean, some of you know that uh, there could be a spontaneous, a spontaneous breakage due to nickel sulfide, and it could just break after uh, several thermal, thermal cycles. This is what the failure looks like if it's due to nickel sulfide. It looks like a number eight or butterfly wings. We could talk for uh, hours about um, nickel sulfide and spontaneous breakage, but again, this is not the, the topic for, for this presentation. And based on this size of panel, this is how many uh, inclusions uh, you could have per, per panel of glass. And the only way to reduce that risk is to, is to heat soak the glass. But again, that's not the topic of this presentation. Now, um, discussion. Handrail height, it's indicated to be at between 34 inches to 38 inches per coat and per ASTM. This, what you see here, if the glass is not laminated, it doesn't comply with the coat because it doesn't have a top rail. And a top rail, again, is defined at 42 inches from walking surface. Surface. This is not a top rail. This is at 34 inches. That is a handrail, which, by the way, is not required by code in this application. As we said before, handrails are only required by, by code at stairs, ramps, and other applications. 
Now, in the event of one glass baluster falling, failing, the guard needs to remain in place and needs to resist the load to specify. Now, um, this topic, uh, this discussion is more um, makes more sense for the older versions of the code, newer versions of the code where, where there's an, uh, an exception and where you can have laminated glass in lieu of the top rail. It's, it changes the discussion, but this is pretty much what we have. In this case, if the glass is not laminated, it doesn't need code. Uh, this does because um, this top rail does and can resist the loads. Now, um, let's just keep through this because we don't have enough time. Now, uh, there's there's a lot of debate about the top rail, so we decided to ask the ICC officials about the intent of the code, and we asked this question through their code opinion submission form. And the question was. Can a glass rail system be installed without a guard on top of the glass if there is a handrail attached to the glass? In other words, no cap, exposed top edge of glass at 42 inch height with a handrail mounted on the side of the glass and hand at handrail height. And that's the photos that we just saw. And the response from the ICC was no. Uh, whether the systems, and this was a follow up question, whether the system has an attached handle or not, does the guard be on top of the glass? have to meet the loading requirement if one baluster fails? And the answer from ICC was yes. Now, uh, conclusion. There's a lot of considerations when designing with glass. Uh, there's a lot of requirements that you need to be aware of as it relates to ASTM as well as code. And at CDC, when we looked at building enclosure systems, we don't only look at the curtain wall already or, or other uh, glazing applications or cladding. We also look at the glass railing systems because we have seen that oftentimes they are overlooked and under design and sometimes not even designed. So it's important that you know that you're aware of all this information and that you take that into consideration. There's additional documents that have requirements for the design of uh, handrail applications with um, railing, glass railing systems, and that's the ICC. AC 439 and ICC AC 273, 273. And that's the end of the presentation. Um, Sarah, do you wanna take it from here? We appreciate you being part of this and thank you for your time. Sure, yeah, thank you Vicente. Um, we have one question that was submitted through the chat. Um, is there any code requirement for the strength of glass remaining in the opening after it's broken? Um, there's concern about occupant falling through the glass after it's been damaged. As of right now, there is none. Uh, in, a, in the 2015 IBC version, there's nothing. Uh, but in the 2018 IBC version, there is. As you saw, and, and let me go back real quick to, to that, there's a specific requirement that the glass needs to resist loads after, it's, after it breaks. And that's here, here at the, at the end. This is exactly um, how it reads in 2018 IBC. Panels shall be tested to remain in place as a barrier following impact or glass breakage in accordance with ASTM 2353. So yes, the answer is yes, but only until the 2018 version of IBC. Okay. And, and Sarah, let, let me um, also add, that per ASTM, there's a different uh, levels, performance levels, and that's what you see here on this table. And depending on your on your performance level, one through four, is whether if that should remain in place or not. Okay, great. And we have another question. Um, is it okay to install a glass railing system with no top cap and no top rail via base shoe or standoff? Um, that depends on on the on the building code on the version of the building code. Uh, IBC 2006 uh, does have the exception, and it started there in 2006, 2009, and and, and so forth. Where if you do have a top rail, uh, then you're fine because you, you you do comply with the guard height. But if you don't have a top rail, and that's again after 2006 then the glass needs to be laminated. If your glass is not laminated, then you must have a top rail. So to answer the question is, if your glass is not laminated, you do need to have a top rail. Okay. And uh, uh, you may have addressed it, but another question, just to be sure, does glass have to be tempered laminated or can annealed laminated be used? 
Well, the building code does recognize uh, recognizes two types of, of um, laminated glass, and it's temper laminated or heat strengthened laminated. It does not allow for annual laminated. Are there any other questions, either via the chat or um, just verbally asked? Um, otherwise, this uh, presentation has been recorded, so we'll be placing that recording on um, glasswebsite.com slash webinars. I put the link in the chat. Um, and that it does take you know five to seven days or so to be posted, but you can look for it there um, probably by next week. And then to revisit um, a question again, so you cannot use annealed Lamy as infill panel. No, the, the building code again it only only mentions two types: laminated temper and laminated heat strengthen. And again, remember that there's a diff this uh, other requirement that uh, being considered a hazardous location per the code, then it needs to be safety glass. And in laminated glass applications, it can only be tempered or heat strengthened laminated. And another question, can you have tempered laminated railing systems with no handrail and no top cap? I, I didn't hear, can, you, you broke off, can, can you repeat please? Can you have tempered laminated railing systems with no handrail and no top cap? Only if it's laminated and only if you are under IDC 2006 and beyond. Okay. Any other questions? All right, well, we appreciate your time, Vicente, and thank you to everyone for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, look for the next Thirsty Thursday to occur in December, and um, we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, Vicente. Have a good day. Thank everyone. you, Sarah. Thank you all. Bye-bye.